Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Light Dependent Resistor, also known as LDR or Photocell or Photoresistor. Characteristics, common and unique applications. What are photocells? Photocells are basically composed of uh, some material. It's a, usually a polycrystalline semiconductor, for example, cadmium sulfide, which is deposited on a substrate. This material is sensitive to light, so the resistance is changing with light. It's put on a substrate and in such a way that uh, to form a resistor so that the thickness and the length and the width of the lines will determine actually the resistance. The resistance is changing as a function of light and uh, it can be used in many, many applications. Now, the advantage is that it has a very high light sensitivity and uh, it can carry, carrying it should be, carrying uh, quite a bit of current uh, in milliamp uh, range. And it is very versatile because there is a large change in resistance. Now, the disadvantage is that the response is slow. Well, it's not that precise for light measurements, but in many applications, like uh, light switches, this will be one of the main applications, that is to turn on artificial light when the background light is down, uh, door guards, uh, motion sensors, there should be sensors, uh, touch switches, uh, and then uh, also it can be used to build the very basic uh, light meters. So it's a very versatile element used in many, many applications. It's a very old element and it can be found in uh, many uh, cases uh, in elevators uh, for door guarding and many other applications. Now the change in resistance is a function of light. Being a semiconductor, this is an exponential change. So we see that in a log-log scale, the resistance as a function of illumination is a straight line. It's about a straight line. This is just drawn by hand, uh, but in practice it is a straight line. We see here another unit, also a straight line. And here we see uh, this particular uh, vendor is showing the range of uh, uncertainty, the accuracy that you get the device. Uh, this The shadow is like the minimum and maximum value that you could expect. Now the light is measured in lux or uh, foot candle and one foot candle is about uh, 10 lux, actually it's 9.7 or something like that. And um, what is a foot candle? This is the in intensity of light that uh, you'll get uh, from so a uh, candle. Uh, it's a measure, of course there is a rigorous definition of it. But uh, from uh, this presentation, you can understand that one foot candle is fairly low light. And uh, obviously in a uh, artificial lighted room, uh, it, it would be hundreds of uh, foot candles. So the range is quite a bit. And the straight line, since it is a straight line in log log, then if you take the difference between the resistances, just look at the slope, you get a fixed slope uh, that can be um, calculated by the difference in resistance divided by the difference in uh, light density. So this would be the slope of this line. Now the most useful material for photocell is cadmium sulfide uh, and the sensitivity to light is very similar to the uh, sensitivity of the eye. Here is the eye, this is the visible range, this is the uh, wavelength of light and uh, of electromagnetic wave, I should say. And uh, this is now the visible region from violet to red. This is the eye, sensitivity of eye. And here is the uh, cadmium sulfide. You see, it's pretty close to the eye, so therefore it's, it's very, very useful. There are many other materials which are also light sensitive. But um, the spectrum is not uh, fitting the eye, but they are useful in other ranges like infrared. For example, cadmium selenide, 
here it is this this one here is uh, also uh, useful and you can find units like this and this will be uh, primarily in the infrared region and there are many applications in which you like to detect uh, infrared light and uh, as a comparison the silicon is actually even at much higher um, wavelength this is deeper into the infrared region uh, here it is so the cadmium sulfide is really a very good for visible light and therefore it's uh, used in, in many many applications now here the typical uh, unit this is the commercial unit of course and uh, this is the unit here here is the outline and here are the specs i'll go over the specs now it says the light resistance at 10 lux which is one about one uh, foot candle is uh, 8 to 20 kilo ohms dark resistance with no light is one megaohm the gamma gamma is here the slope this is the slope that we just talked about it's um, 0.7 and the power dissipation, very important, that is how much uh, uh, the unit can uh, dissipate when you pass current through it and it's getting, uh, of course, hot. And it is in the range of 10 milliwatt. There are units that uh, would be even higher than that, like 200, 300 uh, milliwatt, which is kind of nice. And then you have a um, maximum voltage, voltage, which is uh, of course when it is in the off state that is when the resistance is very high and this is the breakdown voltage and then it said that the spectral response the peak of the spectral response is at about 540 and this is within smack in the um, uh, visible light and then we have the ambient temperature range uh, for the device is kind of modest and um, Another company, you know, this is another unit, uh, gives also information about, uh, well, it's similar here, 150, 100 milliwatt, uh, same temperature range, and then uh, it has dark resistance again, um, uh, light resistance at 10 lux again, and then uh, it has also, which is important, uh, the uh, rise time and fall time, that is the, the how fast is the device. And if you can see that from dark to 10 lux, and this is with a uh, like uh, um, white light, it's about 60 milliseconds. And the fall time is about 25 milliseconds. So it's a fairly slow device that's not for fast, uh, um, in, not capable of following fast changes. And uh, also I should say, what doesn't say here, that this timing is really depending on the operating point. It's different, uh, for example, if you go from 100 lux to say 1000, uh, usually it'll be much smaller than that. So this is, uh, you might say the worst case because this is when the resistance is very high. It, uh, when the resistance goes low, usually they, um, it, it's much faster. But in many, many applications, of course, uh, this is okay. So we are talking about a few tenths of hertz, uh, 100 hertz, which is okay. Now what about application? Now here is uh, one of the most popular application, a light switch, that is a relay that will turn on the light when uh, the ambient uh, is uh, of low light or dark. And this is done by having this uh, uh, photoresistor or photocell, light dependent resistor, uh, here exposed to the ambient light. We have here a divider and then we have an amplifier. This is one of the oldest uh, amplifiers. So it's a very old design here. It's a Mu A741. Um, and then it's uh, feeding a um, driver uh, for the relay. So let's have a look a little bit uh, deeper here. So here we have this divider. So the trip point is halfway. And let's say it says here that uh, light resistance at one foot candle which is fairly low light is about say 10 kilo ohm here it is one uh, foot candle well it's 10 it's a little bit more than 10 kilo in this particular curve so let's say that uh, 
this will be uh, zero, this part here, this potentiometer, and then we'll have here 10K. So when, when the uh, ambient will be one foot candle, uh, it'll trip. Now, when the light, ambient light is uh, high, then of course this is uh, low resistance, so this will be much higher than halfway, and therefore it will have a low output, and this low output uh, will not turn on the transistor or keep it off. Now, we have to be uh, careful here because this is a, a unit designed for a bipolar power supply, while here we feed it or they feed it from a single supply. Now, this uh, output is not a rail to rail, it'll go to about 2 volts above the negative supply. This is now the negative supply. But since they have here a voltage divider, then it's okay. So when this is like 2 volts, uh, you'll have a low voltage here and this will not be turned on. Now when there is uh, dark or in the dark situation, this is high impedance, high resistance. So this point is higher than this. And then of course you have a, a high voltage here, which should turn on the transistor and this will trip. So this is a very typical application used in very many uh, cases in uh, many environments. Now let me turn now to an unconventional application of the light dependent resistor or photocell. And this is in fact uh, one of my uh, patents from was submitted I guess in 1965 Actually, there are a number of patents uh, submitted to a number of countries. This is uh, one from uh, uh, Britain, and uh, it has to do with uh, an analog circuit. In fact, it's a uh, analog multiplier. Uh, at that time, I was working at a uh, medical electronics laboratory at the Hadassah Hospital in Jerusalem. I came up with this idea, which I'm going to discuss here. So here it is. This is figure one from the pen. And what we see here is two light dependent resistors. Okay, and they are exposed to the same light source. Now, this unit is capable of uh, computing this expression Vx times Vy divided by Vc. This could be a constant voltage, or actually could be also a variable or an input uh, voltage. So this is the function that is performed by this uh, circuit. So let's see how does it work. Now the assumption that are, is made here is that these two are matched in the sense that they follow each other. That is that uh, when you they're exposed to the same light, uh, they'll have the same curve here. So they are two matched. Uh, elements and also I'll do the analysis assuming that R1 is equal to R2. So let's see how does it work. Now obviously we have here a input and then we drive the lamp, okay, the light source, could be a LED, it could be a, actually a incandescent lamp, a miniature incandescent lamp. At that time in fact it was a miniature incandescent lamp. And um, so this circuit stabilizes such that uh, V sub xx is equal to Vx by the feedback here. So this is like the feedback through the light. And then at the same time, this light is um, uh, shining on the other light dependent resistor. Now, since these are following each other, then the divider from here to here and the divider from here to here, and these are the expression for the two dividers, this divider and this divider, is the same. And then we have that um, Vxx one, is equal to Vc times this divider, Vc times the divider, and also V out is Vy times the divider, this is V out. So now dividing these two uh, expressions one by the other, we get uh, this, 
And then eventually uh, we come up with this expression that says that V out is equal to Vx times V sub Y over Vc. So this circuit is in fact calculating this uh, expression. In this uh, configuration, uh, all the voltages have to be a positive, but there is another version here. And in this case, uh, what has to be done is first of all to have a, uh, a bipolar uh, source here or a drive. And then uh, V sub Y is then multiplied by minus one to generate another voltage, which is the reflection of this voltage minus sign. And it can be shown that um, in this case, you get a, the same expression, but it's a uh, bipolar. That is, uh, you get a four quadrant uh, operation for all the uh, polarities. So this was done quite a bit ago. And uh, it was used, by the way, in a number of instruments we have built. And uh, the nice thing about it is also that um, the input and output are really isolated. So in fact, uh, it's an isolated amplifier. In fact, you can make it an amplifier, an isolated amplifier, because if uh, you have only V sub X and, and V C and V Y are constant, then you have an output which is proportional to the input and in isolated way. Now, interesting enough, there is today a device which, uh, not exactly, but has a similar idea or, or exploring a similar idea by using an LED and photodiodes. This is the IL300 of Infineon. It includes two photodiodes which are exposed to the light coming from a single LED. Okay, so very similar to what we had before. Now, here is a suggestion of how to build an isolated amplifier with this device. What we have here is an amplifier. Here is the LED driven by this uh, amplifier. Then we have a one photodiode and then with another photodiode. And here we have the output. So how does this work? Again, we have here a feedback through the light. So V sub X X is even equal to V sub X because uh, uh, of the feedback here through the, through the light. And then since the same light is, uh, or the two diodes are exposed to the same light, then I1 is equal to I2 or within a constant. Then therefore, uh, if R1 is equal to R2, Vc will be equal to Vxx, okay? And if Vc is equal to Vxx, then therefore uh, V out, which is equal to Vc, just a follower, is equal to uh, the input voltage. So, well, it's a different circuit, uh, different element, but there are some uh, common ideas here between what I've shown before and what is done here. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it'll be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.